Hi guys, welcome to the Artist Server. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to upgrade your HP Z800 workstation with a SAS2 storage controller. Now, the Z800 workstation is an older workstation that was produced between 2010 to 2012 and supported the 5500 series Xeons initially, while latter models supported the Westmere 5600 series Xeon processors. Being a dual socket system, that means at the top end you can have up to 12 cores and 24 threads. It officially supports up to 192GB of DDR3 ECC memory, but unofficially you can actually install 32GB DDR3 RDIMMs and get a total of 384GB. Fully configured, these high-end workstations sold for over $10,000 when they were brand new and often were bought by engineering firms, design studios, animation studios, and other similar industries. In fact, the one you're looking at today came from Disney Animation Studios. What I love about old workstation machines like this one is that after a few years, they become very affordable on the secondhand market. And because they were such powerful machines to begin with, they remain very useful even several years later. So uh, this HP Z800 workstation still makes for a great productivity slash moderate gaming slash development machine. And with a 384 gigabyte memory capacity, it's great for running virtual machines to spin up a VM lab for software development or deployment testing. But one of its primary drawbacks is the storage subsystem, which consists of an outdated onboard LSI 1068E SAS1 controller. Now, if you're not sure why a SAS1 controller is a problem, you should watch my video about the two terabyte limit, which I'll leave a card up in the corner for you. So in order to give this old machine an extended life, I'm going to show you how you can upgrade to a SAS2 controller that will support greater than two terabyte hard drives, even up to 14 terabytes, as well as SSDs with speeds up to six gigabits per second. Now let's go take a look inside this machine. All right guys, so we're looking at the inside of a HP Z800 and this is actually my son's computer. So I'm gonna let him kind of introduce to you guys what he's got in here. So I have two processors. Processors, They're both a Xeon X5675. I'm told they have 12 cores, 24 threads at three gigahertz. My memory cards are over here. There's 12 of them, well, each produce only half like 4 gigabytes. In total, there's 48 gigabytes of the DDR3 ECC 1333 megahertz. My graphic card here, this is also how I play my games on my computer, um, <coughs> is an EVGA GTX 980 with a 4 gigabyte memory. Now my boot drive is over here. Let me just take this out real quick so I can show you. So it's right here. It's a Samsung 8040 Pro SSD. You can see here. Now let me put this back in. So, well also, it's a op it's operating system was a Fedora workstation Linux with a Windows 10 Pro virtual machine. Okay, so next is my storage. Let me just take one out. So this is um I have two of these. They're Western Digital RAID Edition, three terabytes. 7200 RPM hard drives in a mere configuration. So, like, if this one died or something failed, this one over here would have a copy of it. So, now give me a second to put this back. So, this, do, this is like all this is in this storage controller right here, which is a Dell H310 with a IT mode filmware, which is also on my dad's storage. You probably should go buy that. Um, finally, you have my sound card. My sound card here is um plays the sound of the computer. 
And that's it. All right, thank you. All right, guys. So one thing I wanted to show you about this computer today is um, there's an onboard storage controller here that is a really old SAS-1 um, LSI controller. The, the chip is right down there. You'll see LSI down on that chip. And normally, uh, when these were brand new out of the factory, they were connected to the, the back plane of these four bays were connected to that. Now, of course, SAS-1 hardware is really ancient these days and uh, has a lot of problems with uh, not just in terms of performance. Actually, performance isn't really a big problem, but uh, it has a limitation in terms of the, the size of the hard drives that um, it can work with. And so I upgraded uh, this computer with a SAS-2 uh, H310, like my son just mentioned to you. Um, but the challenge is to connect these backplane uh, bays to a normal SAS controller because basically the connectors that come out of these four bays are just like these SATA connectors. And so I have this special cable right here that basically converts um, these uh, SATA connectors into a single SFF8087 connector. And so I have this in my store. If you have a Z800 and you're looking to convert the hard drive bays to a SAS2 so that you can use like really large, uh, greater than two terabyte drives and that kind of stuff. Um, this is a really nice cable to have. It basically converts that backplane to SAS2 and you can pretty much use any uh, SAS2 controller like this H310 here. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is that this H310 did not originally work because uh, the HP computers tend to have a conflict with the Dell SM bus. And so I had to block off the SM bus pins on this card for this to work. And I'll put up a video uh, card in the corner here to show you um, how to do that if you run into that problem. But if you get a card that isn't uh, Dell or doesn't have SM bus on it, um, you should have no problems uh, using pretty much any SAS2 uh, HBA controller to drive the four bays here. All right, so that's what you need to do if you want to upgrade your Z800 to SAS2 and be able to put larger than two terabyte hard drives in the four bays. Now, uh, as said earlier, my son has an H310 and this um, probably isn't the card I would necessarily recommend uh, just because it requires the SM bus uh, fix that uh, you'd have to do. Now, if you find yourself already having one of these cards, you can certainly apply that fix and put it in here. Um, my son's had this card working smoothly for over a year, so um, it's definitely not a problem um, if you're willing to apply the workaround. Now, what I would recommend instead, if you are you have a Z800 and you're looking to uh, to buy a card, um, I've got a couple of cards in my store that I'd recommend for this kind of use case. Uh, one is this. This is the H1110, and if all you want to do is control the four bays in the Z800 with a SAS2 controller, this is the perfect solution for that because it's only got one port. Uh, it will fit in a smaller uh, by four PCIe slot. So, you know, you can basically use any of the slots here. It doesn't have to be the larger by eight. And, um, and this one SFF8087 port will be enough to connect to the four bays and drive that. Now, <clears throat> the Z800 is actually pretty versatile. And so you could actually go beyond the four bays here. So note that you have uh, three, I believe three uh, five and a quarter inch bays here. And you can get one of those, uh, I don't know what you call them, but they're like four, they, they mount in uh, two or, or three four, uh, five and a quarter inch bays and allow you to install uh, three and a half inch hard drives. So if you wanted to add a few more hard drives other than the four here and you want to add them here, uh, or you can add SSDs as well, then you might want something with more than one port. And in that case, I would recommend uh, either this card or there's another card that I currently don't have, but this is the 9211 8i, and this is a genuine LSI card. And uh, the LSI cards don't have the SM bus issue. So if you get one of these, it should just work out of the box. You can install this in one of the slots uh, it is a by eight, and if you want to take advantage of the full PCI bandwidth, you'll want to make sure that you install this in, in an electrically by eight uh, slot. So that would probably exclude this one, 
I think that's physically by eight, but that's uh, electrically only by four. And so you'll have to probably use one of the bigger slots down here. But anyway, uh, this has two SFF8087 ports. Uh, you can apply one to the four bays using that cable, which is, by the way, here's a another one of those cables so you can get a closer look. Here, let me kind of show you what this actually looks like. So this is a very short cable. It has an SSF, SFF8087 that goes into the HPA in one end, and it has these um, male SATA connectors on the other end, which will fit with the male uh, female connectors uh, coming from the back plane. And so this is uh, why this is a great little cable to convert those SATA um, connectors into a 8087 connector that you can then plug into a uh, HBA card like this one. Now, the advantage of this one, other than uh, the by 8 uh, giving you up to 4 gigabytes of bandwidth on the PCIe bus, is that it has an additional port that you can use uh, another cable to connect to the 5 and a quarter inch bays for you to uh, allow you to add more hard drives or SSDs or um, you know, and, and another type of uh, extra storage, basically. So, uh, so yeah, so the, the Z800 is actually, there's a lot of expandability. It's a really, really well-designed uh, workstation for its era. And even the newer uh, Z820s and Z840s are, you know, basically follow the same design pattern with uh, some improvements and, of course, upgrades to the internals. But, um, but yeah, that's what you can do. So if you want to upgrade to a SAS2 controller, get either this or this. This is the H1110, and this is the 9211-8i. Um, there is also a 9201-8i, and that's basically equivalent to this. I just don't have it right now, so uh, I can't show you that, but I, any of those cards would work. And I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description to all these products, including the this little uh, kind of cable that allows you to adapt this backplane to a SAS controller. All right, so hopefully that helps you guys out. Uh, for anybody who wants to upgrade their Z800, uh, those are the things that I would recommend if you want to be able to drive um, these four bays or more uh, with a SAS 2 uh, or better controller. All right, so I uh, hope you like this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it and be sure to subscribe. Thank you very much, bye-bye.